This pattern I've cut the eye off of a straight shank streamer hook. I've come in with the 8 dot thread and attached it to the shank. I'm going to bring in the bottom piece of foam here and just catch it by the rear tip and lay down about 3 or 4 wraps. Rotate it right side up. I'm going to come in with two fibers of black crystal flash. I'm going to lay them on the near side, catch them with a the wrap or two, and then take the long slack in the front and fold it back. Catch it with a few more snug wraps. At this point, I'll snip it off to approximately the same length as the body foam. I'll bring in the top piece of foam, and with the same process, I'm going to catch it by the tip, lay down about three or four wraps, and then all I'm going to do is return the thread to the shank, walk it forward just a little less than an eighth of an inch and I'm going to work to create two more additional body segments. Securing each piece of foam with once again about three to four wraps. Once I have those three body segments created, I'm going to throw in two half hitches here, snip my thread, and then right at the front segment <clears throat> where this is finished off, I'm going to touch it with just a little bit of zappa gap. That's just going to help to hold it in place. I'm now ready to take my thumb and index finger, apply a decent amount of pressure, and slide this guy off the pin. Pull that out. And what I've done here, I've taken this on a size 12 black TMCO 2499 and I've pierced it through the bottom of the foam roughly in about the middle just in front of that last body segment and so my setup now looks like this once I get that secured in the vise I'm going to slide that foam body down and out of the way and come in with that same black foam excuse me black thread Come in with that same black thread, the A dot, secure it to the shank, and I'm going to coat just the straight part of the hook shank with the thread. Once I get back to that point, rotate the hook upside down in the vise, and you come in, and with the same process I used on that streamer hook to start this off with, I'm going to catch the foam, squeeze it, and secure it with about three to four wraps. Rotate it right side up. Repeat that same process for one additional segment. Now here I'm going to return the thread to the shank, wrap it forward. I'm going to leave it about an eighth of an inch behind the eye of the hook. Now I'm going to come in with my gator hair. And this is a Montana Fly Company product. This is going to serve as my post material. So I'm just going to pull this foam back. Give myself a little bit of room to work and I'm going to catch this with just a loose wrap. So I'm looking for a loose wrap around it. I'm going to pull that back until the majority of that gator hair is behind the eye of the hook and then I'm going to come in and secure it. I want to work this back to about the point of the hook. So that's kind of my index below me. Really let down some thread wraps. Some little wispy ends sticking out there, that's not going to be a problem. That's going to be enclosed uh, in between the two pieces of foam when we finish it there. So at this point I have a larger hook, I just have a, a larger size 24.99. And I'm going to come in on the top piece of foam and with the point of that hook about where I think that parachute needs to poke through, I'm going to take uh, the point on that hook and I'm going to jab it through the foam. That's just going to create an opening for me to work with here. Then I'm going to grab my bobbin threader and I'm going to run it through the foam out the end here. I'm going to take that longer parachute material. Main reason why I leave it long like that is so that it's easy for me to get through the bobbin threader. I'm going to pull it back. Now this, this is going to require a little bit of pressure to get this to come the rest of the way through. So give it a really nice solid tug. You get some of it's going to kind of break away on the way through and that's all right. Here I'm going to rotate it upside down. I'm going to put in a little drop of Zappa Gap. 
before I tie in this bottom piece of foam. That's just going to help secure that foam to the hook shank, keep that pattern from twisting and rotating as I use it. So my thread's still at that uh, point that's about an eighth of an inch behind, behind the eye. So I catch it, secure it with three or four wraps, and I'm going to look at the taper on my head here. I'm going to trim this just a little bit of a taper on each side. And then when I look at it from the side there, I'm going to come across with my scissors. And I'm going to snip this off nice and flat. Just widen up my hook gap a little bit more. Come in with a little bit more zap gap for the top portion of this. Lay that on the top of the shank. Pull that foam down. Catch it with a wrap. Secure it with three or four. And then just make sure the taper of that head matches up from the bottom view here. So I'm going to leave this a little bit longer uh, than, than the finished product. That's just going to help me out in the last, the next step here. So I'm going to snip that off. I'm going to bring in my hackle. And this is, the hook is a size 12. This hackle is a little bit oversized. Uh, it's just a grizzly hackle. I'm going to catch the stem there. And then I'm just going to slide it down to where it goes behind the profile of the head. So when you're looking at it from the top, that's your view. Secure that with a couple extra wraps. And I'm going to come in and grab this with some hackle pliers. And I prefer just to alternate hands as I work my way around this post. Lots of different methods that can be used to do this. This, I think, for me is quickest and simplest. I'm going to just slightly work my way up the post. And I'm going to come on pretty heavy with the hackle here. I might lay down, depending on the thickness of the hackle, I might lay down anywhere from 8 to 10 wraps. Once I've gone up that hack all a little bit, I'm going to start to kind of work my way back down, weaving that kind of in and around the bottom. I want a pretty nice, thick parachute for this pattern here. One more, we'll probably call it good. Okay, so I have that wrapped off. I'm going to slide my thread up. I'm going to take the nose of the bobbin and I'm just going to ride it right up underneath those hackles and come right over the top of that feather stem that's kind of hidden in there. We'll let go of it at that point. Catch it one more time. And then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to pull all this up and throw down just a couple wraps around the head there. Come in and snip off that stem. <clears throat> we trim this post down just a little bit. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to come in, throw two, two half inches in underneath the post. After I snip this off, I'm going to touch the front of the post and the very top edge of the post with a little bit of zap gap. And that's just going to lock that in place. Really important with any parachute fly that you hit the top of this post right here with a little bit of head cement or zap gap. Keeps that from rolling off once you start to get fish. And with this particular pattern, the way I tie that hackle in, I want to come in right on top of the head where that stem's tied in and tied off. And I want to hit that with some super glue as well. Now, as with all my foam patterns, I'm going to rotate this guy upside down. I'm going to come in with just a hint of this Deer Creek Diamond Fine. And this is the flexible version. I use the flexible on all my foam patterns. And we're just going to touch this real quick. With this Loco foam, this metallic sheen will kind of get chewed and will peel off. And so the flexible resin just adds a little bit of durability to it. Helps prevent that process from happening.